Early morning, the road leading from Shanghai to the Hongyao Airport has been crowded with hurrying Chinese, eager to witness the start of a great event, the International Air Race. A solid mass of humanity encircles the big field, waiting patiently to hear the thundering roar of powerful engines that only await the drop of the starter's flag. A few days have elapsed since we last listened to Jimmy Allen and Steve Robertson, but in the meantime, they have been intensely busy, testing their beautiful new transport, the Golden Dragon realizing that much depends upon the outcome of this race. It is now a short time before the moment set for the start, and we find the two pilots, their heads together, studying a map of China. Have you decided how we'll fly, Steve? Well, I want you to pilot the ship, kid. You put in about 12 hours now on it. You handle it like a bet. Oh, but we have so much here at stake. Hadn't you better handle it? What's the matter, kid? You are afraid of us? I should say not. Oh, gee, I'd love to sit there at the wheel. But you can handle it all right. I'll give an navigating and handle the radio. Okay. Let's see, what do you think of our chances? Well, it's going to be a close race. We've all qualified at better than 300 miles an hour. There seems to be little choice among the ships. Every chance I've had, I've watched the other jobs. And it seems to me that the French and Russian buses are just a little faster than the English jobs. Yeah, I think you're right. But just between you and me, our golden dragon, unless I'm badly mistaken, has a few miles an hour on all of them. That's what I think. But say... I'd feel a lot better if that crippled Chinese boy, Su Chi, wasn't going with the Russian. You know, that's a very peculiar arrangement. I've been trying to figure out just what's back of it all. And I can't do it. The last word I had was that the Russian is taking Su Chi and no one else. That's what puzzles me. A big ship like that Russian flying. You have a pilot and co-pilot. It's two men to handle a job like that. Yeah. And he's not even taking a mechanic, as I understand it. Not me. I was kidding about it yesterday. He said he'd rather do his own mechanical work than fool with someone who isn't familiar with the ship. And he says he's only taking Su Chi along because he knows the country so well. Oh, that's just an excuse. But the real reason for that strange combination is, I don't know. Well, all we can do is to keep our ears and eyes open. And let's not forget that. I told Flash that when the ship is on the ground at all control points, he's never to leave it for any reason at all. Unless you or I are there. And he's going to sleep in at night. He's just no life in you. Hey. Flash tells me that Standard Cheapside is going along as the Englishman's mechanic. Yeah. The mechanic that Smith fellows had planned on using was taken sick. So I offered the loan Spanner to him. <laughs> the fellow was delighted to have it. Oh, let's say, I'll bet Spanner's tickled. Oh, sure he is. Uh-oh. I knew we're down to pilot meeting. Now listen, Jim. Just one last word. This race is much more than just a sporting proposition. If we lose, all our work here in China may have been in vain. We put in months of hard work. And our company has invested millions of dollars. So we've got to give it everything we have. We'll do it, Steve. We'll win this race or else. That's the old spirit. All right, son. 
Let's go down and get our final instructions from Buckley. Like you are. I just seen that uh, Russian guy who is a bibble or whatever his name is go into the operations office. <laughs> oh, you mean Mr. Swalkovich? Oh, yeah. Well, we're headed that Russian place. I don't mind signing a race once in a while. The way aviation is now, it uh, ain't as famous as it used to be. Well, what are you thinking about then? Oh, I, I ain't afraid of getting hurt trying, but if I get through this here race without... Uh, bite my tongue off every time I see that right. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind, Blake. You'd be too busy to worry about getting his name right. Better get the engine started. We'll need to shove off in about five minutes. Oh, okay. But uh, I don't see why they can't get some guy with a name you can pronounce. <laughs> Old play. Striking again. Boy, that's always a sign of good luck. Yeah, you bet your life. The only time I'm ever really worried is when Blake is happy. Well, let's go in and see what Butler has to say. Just wondering what had become of you, boys. Uh, All right, gentlemen. I want to go over a number of points with you. We haven't much time. Now, if I may have your attention for a few minutes, I'll explain the basic regulations governing the contest so that we all have a clear understanding. Mm -hmm. That's the only way, Mr. Butler. Cover everything so there'll be no misunderstanding. As you gentlemen know, I've been appointed by the Chinese government in my capacity as a member of the contest committee of the International Aeronautical Society to supervise the running of this race, to see that all international regulations are properly observed. <laughs> now, in the first place, we have four entries. The Russian ship flown by Iron and Skolkovic, the English by Squadron Commander David Smith Fellows, the French by the Complement of Al, and the American ship by Mr. Allen. They called them, my friend. But I understand Mr. Robertson's flag, the American flag. Oh, no, no, Mr. Skolkovic. On a particular interview, he shows that Jimmy Allen is to be the pilot. Any questions about that? No, 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 no. Now, while we're on that subject, the crew of each entry is limited to three men, although it is not necessary to carry that many. Passengers may be carried if so desired, but they're carried as additional weight, and no passenger can be carried who is a licensed pilot or mechanic. Now, each ship has been loaded with 10,000 pounds weight. This weight is being carried, as you all know, in the form of a leg shot placed in bags. <laughs> the trip is being forced to test the efficiency of the ship. Now, here's a very important point, gentlemen. At the completion of the race, that is, when you have flown the course and returned here to Shanghai, these bags of shot will be removed from the cabins and again weighed. Should it be discovered that any of the ships do not have the required weight and have not carried this weight all through the race, they will be automatically disqualified. The purpose of that rule is, of course, quite obvious. But our loads be checked at every control point? And we, what about that, Monsieur Butler? The loads will not be weighed at any of the stops. But it is my duty to look into every cabin at every one of the stops and see that the bags are there intact. Is that understood? Oh, yeah. 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 But I think we should have the load checked at every place we stop. No, that is not necessary. After all, it is no easy task to unload, weigh, and reload 20 tons of weight. And I see no necessity anyway for such a ruling. After all, this is a sportsman's race, and you are all gentlemen. Oh, Mr. Butler, I'd like to make a suggestion. If my friend, uh, Mr. Iswalkovich, wishes to check the loads with any of the ships, let him take out the bags himself, weigh them, and then return them. <laughs> <laughs> it's no for making jokes, All right, let's get on with it. Now, about the timing. The ships will take off using a racehorse start. That is, all four jobs will line up on the field together, and when the starter's flag drops, they'll take off together. When the flag drops, the time begins. And you are timed from that moment until you cross the finish line at the next control point. Now, if for any reason whatsoever your ship is not on the line ready to start at the appointed time, it will be counted against you anyway. I, uh, I jolly well don't quite know what you mean, old fellow. But he means this, babe. If you were to take off a half hour after the flag is dropped, that half hour is counted against you. If our ship is not ready, it is our own fault, Miss Fox. Yes, that's right. Does everyone understand that rule? <laughs> all right. You know the course which covers practically all of China. Today we leave Shanghai and fly direct to Peking. At each of the stops, you will find a white line across the center of the field. Fly across this line so that you're checked in, and then you can land at your leisure because your time stops the minute you cross the line. Mm -hmm. right. The rules allow you to spend as much time on repairs as you want. 
But if your ship is not ready when the starting flag drops, we, under no circumstances, can delay the starting time. Is that clear? All right. Now, there's just one more point, gentlemen. As you know, this race is sponsored by the Chinese government. And their purpose in promoting such an event is to stimulate interest in and encourage the development of aviation. Now, I'm going to ask all of you to bear that in mind and do everything possible to cooperate in that respect. Will our ships be guarded when they're on the field at the various stops? The government will provide soldiers to keep the crowds back at all control points. Of course, at night, we won't be bothered with crowds. And outside of a few sentries to keep the curious away, I don't think we'll have any trouble. All right, gentlemen, are there any more questions? No, that seems to cover everything. Well, gentlemen, I wish you all success and luck. As I mentioned a moment ago, this is a sporting affair, and I know we'll see nothing but the finest type of sportsmanship displayed by the pilots and crew. All right now, get into your ships and taxi out to the starting line, and the best of luck to all of you. Thank you, Well, Steve, that's the work. I guess we're all set. You know, I like this fellow, Buckler. I think he knows his business. What do you think of our competitors? Well, we've known the rock a couple of weeks. He seems to be a nice fellow. I like his English. Smith, fellow. Oh, he's a fine chap. And a pilot with a great reputation. He was on the British Niner Cup team, you know. But what about the Russians? <laughs> he's still an unknown quantity. We'll just wait and see how he turns out. Well, here's our golden dragon. I'm in, kid. Already, boys. Uh, there must be 10 million troops out here to watch this take off. All right, George, there is a big crowd. Close it off, Flash. All right, Jim. Taxi it off of the line. Boy, old boy. I wonder how we'll feel when we get back to Shanghai. Yeah, well, that's hard to tell. Our position on the line is between Smithfellas and the Rock. All right. Let's go. Here comes the Rock with his firebird. Yeah. And Smithfellas with his sensing comet already on the line. Here comes the Russian, too. Hold it, Jim. Hold it. That's about right. Okay. There's the starter. We might take a look around. Hey, everything looks okay. Everything set back there, Flash? Watch it, Jim. Watch it. The starter's raised his flag. We're ready for him. Get set. Down it goes. They're off. Come on, you golden dragon. With a thundering bubble, fours, moods, slick airliners slip across the field of Shanghai. The great international race has started. But be with us for a startling development in the next air adventure. has come to you through the facilities of the world broadcasting system.